Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Dream Drop Long Distance, a podcast about bonding through Kingdom Hearts, the way that uh, every good teenager should. So, uh, last we left off, we found ourselves in an unexpected cliffhanger. Which is a game design problem in and of itself, if you think about it. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. I kind of fudged the bucket on that one where <laughs> the storyline, it was designed and the way they it was like, hey, you get done with this first level, this wave of people and you do all the Hades stuff and you meet Cloud and it's like, oh, cool. Well, we're done with that. I'm going to go do something else. And then I get a call from you and it's like, oh, hey, how far did you get? I'm like, oh, well, up to the, the point it let me. You were like, so you didn't fight the thing. I'm like, what thing? <laughs> and you're like, oh. And that's when I realized that Hercules Coliseum not, not only has multiple boss fights in it when you first start, but they don't give you really any signifying like or any indication that you can go further into it. You just have to turn around and go back in and it's like, oh, there's actually another fight here. And so... Kyle fought what was Cerberus, the three-headed giant, I guess, would it be fire breathing? I don't exactly know what all he does. He spits some kind of black fog-ish He pukes thing. all over the floor. It's a bad thing. You gotta, you gotta scold him. Yeah, you just gotta be like, hey, calm it down. And you whack him and you boop him in the schnoot. All three. And ten, all three. <laughs> Which, I will say, even on proud mode, I didn't find it was a very hard fight. I beat him on the first try. Yeah, and I remember this being a hard fight. My strategy was to just go for one of the side heads where he just has no angle of attack, really, and then just run during the, the couple of uh, the couple of attacks that are a little more... Doesn't he, like, call things down from the sky? It's aggravating. But uh, other than that, it was pretty easy to just whack his side head until he goes down. Yeah, he... I think, uh, I mean, his AoE was a little bit annoying only because Donald is very squishy. <laughs> and the moment he starts raining down the black orbs of death, as I called them, it mm -hmm. was like Donald immediately. He just gets trucked. That's it. Like he he can't do anything. Goofy was able to hold his own for the most part, especially once you level him up to have that. Um, I think it's called like rocket rocket something where he will jump directly in the air and bash him with his shield. Oh, yeah. I hardly use that one, but that sounds nice. It's really I, that was like my favorite one when I read, did my first playthrough and I remember when he got it because I watched him do it once and I'm like whoa Goofy's got like shield bashing now that's fucking cool and when I, he did it again I was immediately like yep yeah, put it on because it's great for taller enemies and Goofy will jump up and smack them whenever you can't reach very easily he doesn't do it all the time but he does it pretty you can set it to like pretty frequent and I noticed that helped a lot and then also I didn't realize that you could jump in the stands to get a little bit of height to be able to jump to his head. And oh, you know, I never like, even oh. did that. Yeah, it was. I was just like, I did it by accident. I jumped backwards and I was like, wait, why am I higher? And I'm like, oh, I'm in the stands. And then I also realized you could go back far enough where he couldn't like snap at range. Oh, and so like I had I could do that and get like a quick second to throw a potion down before he hit me with something else. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's smart. That's smart. I don't feel like I cheesed it. Uh, because he did still put me probably within about 15% of my HP bar. It got, it got dicey. It got very dicey. I think the only <laughs> reason I even survived was I made a last minute curveball decision to heal Donald with a potion, the last potion that I had versus healing me. And oh Donald God. threw a cure to me. And I was just like, yes, uh... thank you, Donald. <laughs> the one time it works out to heal Donald, go figure. Very, very few and far between. Uh, I will say that normally I do not trust that decision and I do not put that. And I would tell most people, let Donald just recover or let Goofy hopefully get him up because otherwise he's just going to go right back down again. Yeah, I really wish it were the other way around that Donald was the higher level one and Goofy was the lower level one. That, you know, Goofy could be the one constantly getting healed by Donald and Donald's just doing well because he's two levels higher than everybody else. Well, I mean, it's probably why they did that, because I feel like that would be a bit overpowered. Because if you had Donald was more, if Donald was more tanky, 
he'd be harder to drop, which means that he has the ability to heal. And then, you know, at some point it, that gets a little too easy. Mm, but I mean, Donald Duck is a powerful wizard. He is. But even the most powerful wizards don't tend to be very armored. That's why a lot of, I mean, you think about it, like a lot of people protect the medic, especially in like, I mean, a lot of MMOs, stuff like that. It's like healers in the back, get the hell away. Do not. But Donald, of course, is like, I'm going to jump in your face. And which is like, Donald, you do not need to be in the giant hell dog's face. Please. But, oh, he's dead. He's dead again. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. <laughs> dodge. Just dodge, please. Dodge once. If he could die, I would love if I could share the dodge ability Sora gets with him. Right. Just so he would be able to roll around and get away from stuff. It would be adorable looking. I love watching Goofy do use his abilities, like his little shield rush where he just puts it in front of him and runs through everything. <laughs> I mean, yes, but we're going to talk about this in a little bit because we're about to when we get into other worlds. But I actually usually keep Donald as my second party member and whoever is the, the party member of that world. So okay. for one reason and one reason only, because you get to hear Donald say that other character's name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's so funny. Him saying Tarzan? Yeah. No, I, I, I get that part. I don't think I have actually used one of the end level characters yet. Hmm. Or I think I, I've used one and it's only because I found out you need him to be able to access certain parts of an area. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm excited to find out. So should we uh, should we jump in then? Yeah, let's let's go ahead and jump in. Last I recall, we had made a bet as to what the next world would be. Admittedly, it was a bet slightly in my favor because I have replayed this game so many times and it was fresh enough, but not so fresh that I knew with certainty. But we, we were betting what the next world would be. And I had said Deep Jungle and... I think you might have said Agrabah. I I did. I said Agrabah. And all you listening at home, I will admit when I'm wrong. And Kyle was right. <laughs> <laughs> it was, in fact, Deep Jungle. It was Deep and, Jungle. Uh, and who who uh, who dwells in Deep Jungle, Kyle? Tarzan. Tarzan. Yeah. Deep Jungle is the Tarzan level. In Kingdom Hearts 1, and it is based around our three adventurers crash land and wind up in Tarzan's old treehouse that his family raised him in. And you are immediately greeted by Sabor the Jaguar, who is a he's like a loose antagonist to Tarzan, even in the movies, because he I mean, yeah, he's always a threat in the background, but he's not the real threat at the end of the movie. Yeah. In the movie, he winds up taking out Sabor within like the first, I guess, hour. It's kind of like a his when they show like the moment he becomes an adult, he starts to develop the skills that make him what he is. He winds up going out and hunting down Sabor. I find it very funny in this level that this jaguar just jumps out of nowhere and will just randomly start a fight with you. I, I, to me, out of out of sheer spite, because he's just like, I'm going to get you eventually. No, I mean, I get it. I get why the designers had to do this, because there aren't heart wor- heartless in this world for the, the beginning section. Like, uh, thematically, it makes sense, I guess. And they wanted you to have something to fight rather than just wandering around aimlessly. Yeah. One thing that I've really noticed, the thing that stuck out to me the most, is that this world does a terrible job of telling the story of Tarzan. Have you noticed that? Yeah, it really... Like, I feel like if you've never watched the movie... They leave so much up to the imagination. <laughs> yeah. And there's so much that's not explained, like Clayton and Jane. Yeah. They're obviously explorers. Where are they from? Yeah, they don't give you any indication where they're from. I'm just going to say this right now. It is an absolute affront to everything about that movie that Jane's father is not in this game. Right. Ah, oh, what a character. <laughs> what a nutty character. I can never remember his name, but no. he is because she just calls him father. And then I think Clayton always just called him professor. 
So he doesn't need a name. doesn't matter. We know who you're talking about. It's instant recognition. He's amazing. Basically, he's the Nigel Thornberry of this. <laughs> <laughs> and he's nowhere to be found. No, they just completely ignore him when he actually had a somewhat big part in the movie of the development of Tarzan into learning what human society is. I mean, yeah, Jane is the bigger the bigger influence, but I mean, she's not going to she's not there if it's not for her dad bringing her there. Yeah. And they don't even show Tarzan's development too much either. Like mm -hmm. um, you go around and collect a bunch of slides to show to Tarzan to see if he can figure out the word that he's looking for. Yeah. Which I'm just like, I don't know. Did you catch the Easter egg in there? I'm pretty sure I did. What was it? I, I know what you're talking about. Hollow Bastion shows up or the original yeah. original, I think. Yep, it sure does. And I remember seeing that and I was like, is that supposed to be like a different city? Like maybe where Jane and him grew up? I don't know. Uh, but I, I thought that was Hollow Bastion. I couldn't really tell. Yeah, it's just really interesting. Where did that come from? Who, who was that there for? What's developing with that? Is that just an Easter egg for people who are replaying the game? Or is it just foreshadowing? I don't understand. I thought of it as like, if that's Hollow Bastion, are they claiming that Jane and her family are actually like this kind of, you know, the heartless refugees and that they came to that world after going to Hollow Bastion at some point to look for gorillas. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I can't. It's like that they haven't developed any other part of the story to tell you where they're from. So I was kind of I mean, the Dalmatians made it to Hollow Bastion and tell me how that works. Oh, yeah. Yeah, true. Yeah, that makes sense. They, they could end up anywhere. Oh, God. <laughs> Also, I just it's like their Dalmatian, the Dalmatian's world exploded and the puppies are everywhere. All in boxes, neatly packaged boxes. All in very neatly packaged little boxes. The, the Dalmatian thing, I still think is silly, but that's whatever. Yeah, I, that was I do agree. The storyline for Deep Jungle is probably to me the weakest in the game, especially with what they could have done. Like they give you n basically no indication who Tarzan's ape friend is. It's this supposed to be this young gorilla who he like has grown up with since he was a child. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And they just never she's a, she's completely throwaway. She shows up for one gag with Donald, I think, and that's about it. Yeah, like at the beginning. And I think she also shows up at the scene where Tarzan is trying to convince Kerchak to help them. And she just looks at him. And it looks at Kerchak and then leaves with the gorillas. Mm. And I was like, well, that was anticlimactic and built nothing whatsoever. Yeah. I, I mean, you, you've done a better job of retelling the story of Tarzan to me because I've forgotten a lot of the details that you've mentioned already. Yeah, I don't know, man. It was a weird it was a kind of weird level. I think Tarzan's got some of my favorite combat. Like, I really oh. I do enjoy the heartless in that world. Oh, yeah. The monkeys are great. They're wacky little things. So anybody, for anybody who doesn't know the story of Tarzan, as Tarzan grows up, he winds up stumbling upon these humans who have come to his jungle to study gorillas, who he grew up with. And they have Jane, who he winds up falling in love with. And the antagonist who they have brought into this game named Clayton, who is a field guide, but also like a hunter. And he obviously, from the moment you see him with his must with his pencil thin curly Q mustache, you know, this guy's a villain. Um, <laughs> like, they couldn't have painted a villain any better. Mm -hmm. And he immediately, you just tell, and he kind of falls to the heartless. And uh, as we are progressing through the story, we run into some of the worst platforming I've ever played in my life. I had no problem with this. I, I, I'm used to the, the reactions that you have to do. I, I've, I've, I've got a flow. I didn't fall once. How the hell, man, the vine platforming for one, just God awful. But it's it's the very first time you're introduced to platforming in that level. And it's whenever you're going over that little water enclosure with the hippos that keep coming up and down mm -hmm. to hop across. It was that Sora's big ass feet. <laughs> Somehow, if you don't hit the top of the hippo just right, he slips off and then you fall into the water. And he can't climb onto a ledge for some reason, which means you have to swim all the way back to the beginning and go up the ramp. And there's no other way. There's no other way to do it. It's the most 
infuriating mechanic I have ever played in a game. I don't know who, like, the, I don't know if it's the area of sensitivity of like, oh, if he lands in this square, he's good. If he lands in this, these two pixels on the right side of the hippo, <laughs> he's going to fall into the water. But you could have at least made it to where the six inch ledge that you walk up to that's smaller than Sora's head that he could climb onto. Yeah, I mean, I'd hate to see Sora fall in a swimming pool. He'd never be able to get out. <laughs> he would die. He would physically <laughs> die. Donald would sit there and laugh at him as he dies. <laughs> but th that is hearsay. I just want to say, yeah, I know at some point when I was a kid that probably it wasn't too difficult. And I probably was like, oh, this is the greatest game I've ever played in my life. But that level made me want to punch something. I don't know, man. That was like the most frustrating bit of this game so far that I have had to deal with where I'm just like, this is just bad. And they really and they don't give you any other options. Like you have to go that way. And so you really I couldn't really speed through anything. If I needed to get back to an area that required me to go between one of those spots, you had to do that platforming. There was no other there was no real workaround except to go extremely back around the opposite side of the map and come back around, which would have taken forever every time you did it. I think there's one way. I think there's a path because when you're going to meet the gorillas, the way that I think you're supposed to go is you're supposed to climb up the first set of vines that you find and swing, 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 go to the next map, swing, 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 and you end up at the gorilla meeting place. Hmm. Or you can go up and over the hippos and just climb up that vine and there you are. And it takes you to the same spot. So I think there's I think you can go either way. And even that is just kind of a, a little bit confusing that there's two ways to get there. And one of them is just a little bit faster if you know how to jump on the hippo just right. Possibly. I mean, that's just things we'll have to figure out on the next one if I ever go back to it. Never. Um, <laughs> Never returning. No, I think I'll just let it. I'll let it sleep. But I will say uh, in terms of design, the map is fun. You know, there's some little little gags and stuff you could do that are fun to do. I will say it's probably got one of my favorite designs for an end of level boss in the game. Yeah. Um, it. So I guess good if you if you're cool, we'll move on to that. Yeah, because this level is actually very short. Clayton will eventually team up with the Heartless. And then you find out he's actually being possessed by this like a 12 foot chameleon Heartless that is kind of like a two parter or like a split battle. Like you have to keep Clayton down so he doesn't keep pot shotting you with a 12 gauge <laughs> while also trying yeah. to take down this chameleon boss who. Thought, I thought I remembered whenever I first played it. You check me on this. But first time I played it, I remembered it being able to go invisible mid fight. Mm -hmm. Yep. It, it didn't do that for me on this one. Like once I knocked its invisibility down, I guess maybe I don't know. Or maybe we just kept hammering it to the point where it didn't have the time to. But it was a pretty easy fight overall. Like I took it in probably four or five tries. Oh, no, dude, I beat that thing first try. I was, I was, oh. I, I remember this thing being a challenge when I was a kid and then always having to watch the cutscene over and over. Have, have you at least appreciated that of the final, the, both the final mix and now the 1.5 remix that you can, uh, skip cutscene? <laughs> yeah. I, I will say I, I give them props on that. And you've seen whenever you would lose to the chameleon, or I guess you didn't see because you didn't lose to him. Mm -hmm. It didn't only it didn't start at the chameleon part. It started at the part right before that where you have to fight Clayton. And then the second round is Clayton being controlled by the chameleon. And every time you lost to the chameleon, you had to go back and beat the first round again. And so it was just like it was like um, it's like every time you every time you re, every time you had to restart, it was almost like you lost 15 minutes. Yeah, so frustrating. I'm. I'm feeling myself being over leveled, but I'm not upset about it because I'd rather just get through these dang fights because like, ugh. where are you sitting at level wise right now? Very curious. I wish you had asked me that question maybe three weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I think I'm sitting like Sora is maybe at like 24, Donald's at like 23, and Goofy's at like 28 because he's an absolute monster. <laughs> yeah. What a lad that one. Yeah. So did you play with Tarzan in your party? 
Yeah, I did. I my my, my thing is always to to keep keep Donald and add whoever the second person or whoever the in world person is. I, oh, so I had Donald and Tarzan. So hearing him say Tarzan, I can't do the impression, but hearing just hearing him yell that was always a joy to my life. That's funny. Yeah, I, I didn't use Tarzan. I had him in the party, and almost immediately it threw my rhythm off so much that I just hated it. Like I think I did three heartless encounters with him and i went this sucks and then i just went and got donald back oh so you're a purist hey man like i i like that they allow you to work with new characters and things like that and i think later on there are some characters that i remember specifically i was like oh i loved playing with these guys um yeah i just i haven't found a bit i didn't find a benefit to tarzan i don't know he just didn't really he didn't do it for me well, that's also because you replaced Donald for him. If you'd replaced Goofy, he, it makes a lot of sense because, you know, you're you're replacing a uh, a melee fighter with a melee fighter. Quit making sense. I just want to say before we before we move on, I, I there are two things that I really liked after the Clayton fight in in uh, Deep Jungle. There's two things that I really liked. Mm -hmm. One is when you need to get up to the next area after the Clayton fight and the gorilla says, yeah, yeah, and just throws you up there. <laughs> love that so much hum just young just hums you yeah <laughs> kerchak he just throws you out there i'm like whoa <laughs> and then the the actual room where the keyhole is yeah that was a that, that one's pretty cool i'll give it that that was like that pretty kind of um the butterfly feel yeah the butterflies all around it and everything that was cool that like waterfall area leading up to that that was my favorite part of the level yeah, it was, i mean aesthetically it was very cool looking but the the it was just a basic platform jump in thing it was kind of 2d when you when you break it down yeah oh no of course it's i mean it was about as basic as it comes but you know they give you a lot of treasure and they give you a lot of mm -hmm. things it's like hey you just beat a boss it's like let's load you up let's get you kind of good to go and then we'll get you off this level but when you're in there and you're looking at the heart of the world and all of that, Tarzan shows himself to have a better understanding of the heartless than anybody else in the game. To me, I read that as like because he's somebody who already lives between two worlds. The idea of seeing something from a third might not be that like shocking to him. Well, not just that, but also just his understanding of the heart. Being like, you know, um, um, Clayton lost his heart and that is what caused everything. And he, he he understood that at a primal level. And I think that's really cool. But but it's, it's also sad that he's the only one who understands that up to this point. And also it was just like Donald, Goofy and him have been having trouble catching that for the entirety of this. They're still trying to figure out where everything is, and how everything goes and Tarzan lived amongst gorillas. Just like, come here, let me educate you real quick. Let me let me <laughs> tell you what's going on here. And they're just like, whoa, Tarzan, you're a freaking genius. E -o -a. <laughs> e equals MC squared. <laughs> uh, but anyway, with that uh, chapter closed, we uh, find a little gummy, or we take a little gummy that was found on the planet and take it back to Traverse Town. Traverse Town. Where you get to sweep up a little, a couple of errands there. You take the gummy over to Sid and you also go visit Squall or Leon in his secret hideaway, which is only accessible now because you know how to use the right trinities, but then it makes you wonder how they were getting in without being able to use trinities but whatever we won't talk about that we don't discuss it and then what is it it's just basically squall hitting a dummy as hard with a gun blade <laughs> yeah just whack 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 over and over and over again and talking about the keyholes because now you finally you know, sealed a couple of them and now you're like oh it's all about the keyholes and i'm just sitting there thinking about it like I don't recognize keyholes as being a, a fundamental piece of Kingdom Hearts anymore. Do you know what I mean? I feel I like mean, that was a bit that was only for this game. In late game Kingdom Hearts, especially like like two, they still had a slight semblance in it. But yeah, anything past like Kingdom Hearts 2 and beyond, yeah, keyholes are, they do not matter. <laughs> that the heart of the world kind of thing, all that. Yeah, that just got completely thrown out for 
here's battle mechanics, here's characters, here's backstory out the ass. <laughs> and <laughs> right. yeah, I Kingdom Hearts one, I feel would like that was this is the only game that really hammered on this this idea of like you have to close all of the keyholes and the worlds you go through to basically save them to keep the heartless out. And even then it doesn't work because Heartless still keeps bonding. So I don't get that. Yeah, I never really understood that part either. Like, why would I come back here? Or why am I still fighting Heartless? I thought we closed this. It's like, oh, they're just the lingering remnants. I could stay here for hours. Like, I have fought them for six levels. This is not remnants. This is a pest infestation. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I completely agree. I thought that was kind of a it's weird. I mean, yeah, but I guess they do that in series all the time. They retcon ideas and they push into new territory. But yeah, it was like for something that was like such an integral part of this game that kind of set the tone for everything. Yeah, I mean, it, it really is kind of a one shot for this idea. And and they did such a good job of it, too. Like the the, yeah. the way that the audio and the visual come together is so moving and powerful. And I, I like it. No, I agree. The first time you close one of them, it's like, oh, it's like, oh, wow, this is awesome. Everything goes going dark the key, like him bringing it out, the laser hitting it, like supposedly and like the lock. Like, I mean, everything, it was all just very well done. And so like it made it feel important every time you did it. You were like, cool, locked another one. Good to go. Moving on. Whereas I feel like in later games, every time you finish a world, you just kind of left. Yeah. It's like, all right, cool. See ya. Yeah, it's like, all right, night, night. We'll see you later. But that's just kind of what it is. I will say, though, I think it was right around this time you get your first summon. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you get, oh gosh, I don't remember where you get it from. So after, while you're in that area, you go to, they ask you to bring some stuff to, I think it was called the Firehouse, which is this uh, kind of off-site house. So when you walk up, it's just, you do a little gag to open this door. You walk in and there is this mushroom e shaped home in the middle of this water. I'm sure you love this water part. Yeah, well, it was terrible. Um, <laughs> How many tries? <laughs> Come on. How many tries? Oh, I don't want to talk about it. Anyway, <laughs> uh, six. Um, so we're, <laughs> you get across this thing. Finally, you get in, you walk into this house and you're like, oh, this is a complete dump. Nobody's lived here in forever. And who are you greeted by, Kyle? Kyrie of all people comes out of a manifestation of Kyrie comes out, which from later games we know this is a manifestation from within Sora's own heart because Kyrie's been with him all along. But for today, uh, Kyrie just he hallucinates Kyrie into existence and talks to her for a second and then she's gone. And that's when Merlin comes in the door with his bag of tricks and makes himself at home. Merlin, and this is the Merlin from the Disney animated movie, The Sword in the Stone. Very kind of bubbly, goofy old man who wears a big, long kind of sockish hat and has a beard that goes about his chin to his knees. One of my favorite Disney characters. I have never seen the movie. Oh, my goodness. It is quite good. Highly recommend. Um, there is a transformation off between Merlin and, and the Swamp Witch. And the animation in it is so much fun. I, I definitely, if anybody hadn't seen it, it came out in like the 60s or not like 70s or 80s. But it, it, you know, he comes in and it's like, oh, well, I've been gone for a while. Let me get this place ship shape again. And he opens his bag and all of his tools and furniture. And <laughs> basically, to anybody who's ever played D&D, he has a what is essentially a bag of many things that can put he can put whatever he wants into it. And within about three seconds, his entire apartment is completely furnished and ready to go. And cluttered as all get out immediately. Completely cluttered. And one of the things that he does pull out is a pumpkin carriage, which is very small. And when you use it, it uh, turns into the fairy godmother from Cinderella somehow. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, she comes out, she comes bippy boppity boo out of it. I know that she's who you give the stone to. I don't remember where the stone comes from. I guess it comes from Merlin? Leon gives it to you, and then Fairy Godmother pops up. And she's the one who is like, yeah, I've got somebody here who can probably help you. And she gives you the summon for Simba. Simba comes out of the stone, yeah. 
And I remember just being first time I read that, I was just like, oh, shit, we're getting Lion King. To anybody wondering, this is as far as lo- as much Lion King as you get in this game. Yeah. They claim that his world is destroyed and this is he's the last bit. He's like a, like the last one of them kind of thing. Uh, I still have yet to figure out his mechanic and how it works. Oh, really? Oh, man, the summon. I, OK, I never used summons when the, the any of the original times that I played Kingdom Hearts, but I decided to do it this time. because I was like, I may as well learn. Right. Yeah. Uh, so you, you kind of like. I forget if you have to hold triangle to charge it up or something, but he does. You, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You charge it up and then he does this proud roar and it just destroys everything around you. Just obliterates all of it. It is an extremely powerful move and can defeat just about anything. So I will say this, though. I the first time I tried to use it was for the boss fight right after this, where it's right before the keyhole for this level. And his roar he was right on the boss mm-hmm. and I charged it and everything was good. And when he released it, I did not see a difference in his health bar. Now, like I said, I don't know if it was just that somehow Simba missed. <laughs> I was like, damn, that that was a waste. Yeah. I don't know what the summon scale on though. Like, I don't know how their damage is determined. I don't know if it's just your level or what. Yeah. Like, um, do, okay. I learned something that it, very recently while I was playing, I don't know if I've mentioned it before or not, but I, I learned that. Um, well, let me ask you how how do you cast more powerful spells in this game? What what stat would you boost? AP, MP. Okay, I mean, I figured it was MP. I was just like, is this a trick question? Because MP seems like the realistic choice. But there's there's no dedicated magic stat. It, it's just a matter of if you have more mana, it does a more powerful spell. It's weird. It, I never knew that. I don't know how I never knew that, but I never knew that. I didn't know that either. Because different spells take different levels of MP, like gravity and thunder take up more than fire and blizzard. I didn't realize it's scaled based on how much MP you have. That's interesting. Yeah, only in this first game because there isn't a dedicated magic stat. So the more MP you have, the stronger your hits are. Weird. Okay. Yeah, I did not know that. So huh. I've been I've been maxing MP, so it's possible that my Simba's just doing more because it scales on MP. I don't know. There's a chance anyway. Possibly. Like I said, I like I like the the summon. I think it's very cool. I just need to figure out the best way to use it. Definitely good against mobs. I, oh, I bet it is. That I mean, it's it, it's an AOE for sure. So yeah, but before I left the house, I will say uh, you do stumble upon a book. Yeah, you deliver that book to him. I believe yes. um, uh, Sid asks you to give that book to Merlin. Yeah, you do. And you open this book in Merlin's house and it transports you into where do you go, Kyle? The Hundred Acre Wood. I left the book alone. I left the book alone. I didn't even open it because I know where it goes. and I'm going to save oh. it all for another day. A Hundred Acre Wood. I played through the first part just to see it because that's probably my favorite level in the game. Really? It really is. I love, for anybody who doesn't know, the Hundred Acre Wood is the area uh, that's home to Winnie the Pooh and all of his friends. And I grew up reading and watching Winnie the Pooh with my mom. And so that level hit a few heartstrings. And kind of seeing... Little baby Mitchell. Yeah. And kind of seeing, you know, seeing old Pooh Bear being a little forgetful and not knowing where his friends are, man, it hits every time. It's just, I don't know what it is. It's, it always makes me very sad where I'm just like, man, like the idea of like, Oh, all all my friends are leaving. I'm not sure where they went, but I'll find them. It's like, Oh, poo. God damn it, man. You're killing me. And uh, you know, then you, I think you go to his house at one point uh, for a next bit. You can talk to like owl who's so far the only other friend I've seen. And he's just like, what are you doing here? I'm like, shut up owl. And I leave. (laughs) <laughs> but yes, so you do. That's one way to put it. Yeah, so you can meet up with uh, you. You jump into the book and you come back out and you stumble upon Riku, Sora's friend from the island who has been missing for a while. And the comedy of it is that Sora thinks he's hallucinating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just missing the space. I forgot about that. <laughs> That was that was pretty funny. He just walks up there, like, scrunching his face. And, and yeah, they have a whole conversation. Uh, and you start to realize that 
you know, Riku's been on his own for a minute, but he has kind of gained some power of his own in the same way that Sora has, but probably through different means. And yeah, I, I mean, Sora uh, at some point turns around to talk to Donald and Goofy and Riku's gone. Batman style. Very Batman style. But then, of course, when they go to leave, he's back again. And, and it's uh, all Maleficent's fault. Ah, uh, Maleficent. Such a- he's simping on her so hard, and I don't know why. <laughs> simping on her? Good God. I, I guess he's just power hungry, but like... I mean, she is arguably like the most powerful villain in Disney. If he's going down that route, there ain't many other people I'd follow. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And I, He's such a punk the whole time. He absolutely is a little punk. The breath of relief that Sora breathes when when Riku is okay, too. Like, no concern that he doesn't even see him again for a while. It's just like, oh, Riku's okay. I can I can go on with my life. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, you're good? Cool. Ah, we're fine. Hey, guys, I found my friend. We're fine. We're, everything's good. Which is just like, cool? That's it? That's all we're going to get out of this? <laughs> yeah. Not a... I mean, he does try to be like, hey, guys, my friend should come with us. And Donald's like, fuck that. Yeah, I don't understand why why Donald would be so opposed to it, especially immediately after he and Sora had been fighting at Deep Jungle. They just fought and they just made up about this. And now Donald's like, ah, no, 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 man, not going to happen. Our ship only fits three, not four. Go away. Which I think it's hilarious because it's like that ship's already small enough. It's, I don't know. Whatever. I think Donald's just kind of silly. Also, it's a completely customizable ship. Yeah. I know they don't play that out in the story, but you can build a bigger one. Very big. Yeah, you can, you can build a limo. A little space limo. Very space jam of you. So yeah, we get through the Riku stuff and we go to the boss fight. Which is a whole rigmarole to get, th- get to it and through it. You have to go... Through the gizmo shop, up to the roof, you have to have paid attention and know to ring the bell three times. And once you ring the bell three times, that's when the fight, but that's when the boss is summoned. And it's like, okay, it's kind of cool. I like that the graphics of the of Traverse Town's uh, fountain change. That's that's fun. Yeah, it's a fun little addition. But I again, much like the Tarzan fight, it's rather frustrating. Where if you lose to this guy, it's not the fight just doesn't start over again. It's you have to start back at the gizmo shop, go back to the top, do the gag with the bells again. You start right back from square one with the with the puzzle ish part of the level and then have to then go back down and then start the fight all over again. <laughs> Luckily, I only had to fight him, I think, three times. Oh, no, that's still three times. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, but it's only guess he finished it in one. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever. Good whatever. Fight. It was a good fight. It was a fun fight. I, I like the, the they subvert you on it, too. They're, you're like, oh, cool. This guy. I fought this guy a couple times. I fought him once here. I fought him a couple times at the at the Coliseum. I know what to expect. I know what I'm getting myself into. It's going to be all good. I'll kick this guy's ass again. And then like a third of the way through the fight, it just flips. Ah, literally. Yeah, literally flips. I love it. Everything goes upside down, topsy turvy. Arms are, arms are feet and feet are arms. It'll ah, that was a funny moment. Where it's like, why is his head flipping upside down? Why are his arms flipping? Oh God, he saw his arms are his feet. Oh no! <laughs> and then every th- every game plan you had just gets thrown out the window, and it's like, all right, here we go. What a cool fight. Mm-hmm. No, very fun fight. It, it introduced a challenge that you're not expecting, which I thought was very clever by the game developers while also leaving working with the puzzle pieces that they already had too that's fun that's that's yeah. real creativity i gotta give them credit for that absolutely so if anybody at square unix is listening you did a good job kid we're proud we're proud we're proud <laughs> <laughs> and for all all that work of the fight what you get is the arrow spell do you use the arrow spell okay so currently i have on like my my quick select spells mm-hmm, spell mm-hmm. slots. I have thunder, I have cure, and I have arrow. You do use arrow. Interesting. I actually enjoy it, especially in the next level where mm. you get mobbed a lot and it will take two to three hits for you. And I will actually go out of my way to equip arrow on me before jumping into a mob 
because it, it keeps my combos from being broken as much. Oh, I didn't think about it that way. Okay. Yeah, I didn't really understand the benefit of it until there was one time Donald hit me with it. And I was like, the hell is this? And then somebody ran up and tried to whack me. And it didn't hit. And, like, my combo just kept going. And it, like, broke their hit. And I was like, oh, this is what Arrow does. This is kind of cool. And I've just been I've just been experimenting with it. But I really like it. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I haven't really touched it much. I've been all my MP goes to other stuff. Yeah, I mean, it does. It does sap a bit of MP, so I don't use it very often. Uh, but when it's like a tougher fight, I'll throw it on. Or I mean, God forbid, if I'll be in the middle of a fight, I'm like, Donald, I cannot have you go down. I'll throw arrow on Donald. Just to, like <laughs> try to soak up some damage for him. That's a good idea, actually. Yeah, it it works. I mean, he's definitely not go, not going down quite as much. I need to try that. I haven't thought of that. Yeah, especially in the earlier squishy levels. I mean, he's still, he stays squishy, but he's not quite as bad. So we get done with that boss fight, and you're introduced to the heart of the world of Traverse Town. And yet another beautiful lock in the keyhole scene, completely irrelevant to the rest of the series, but it's cool in this moment. <laughs> yeah, makes, you're, you're, we're here. We're here in this game. We have no idea what's next, Kyle. <laughs> so with uh with that you uh you take to your gummy ship and uh you've it's been enhanced by Sid who is actually the gummy salesman he's not the accessory shop guy anymore. Mm-hmm. The accessory shop guy is a guy who you definitely saw get turned into a heartless. Oh, did you find the stowaway in the accessory shop? No, what is it? Pinocchio chilling out. It's really weird, but it's kind of cool. Was he in a box or something? No, he's just chilling on the floor. It's like sitting on the floor, kind of like under the counter. That's crazy. No, I didn't. I never knew he was there. Huh? Yeah. Well, there. We, OK, well, I'll have to go back and take a look because that's that's really funny. Yeah, I, I went in there, too, and never saw him. Yeah, I, 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 it's a it's a weird thing, but there he is. So, but yeah, you you go through all that you get back out to your ship and a whole new world is available to you by way of an awkward portal that you have to get into while you're in your gummy ship in mid fight but whatever yeah okay you know it's like we're taking it really seriously here we're we're very serious about our our gummy ship portals here yeah it makes not a whole lot of sense on like why that's designed that way I find the piloting in the portal levels is more entertaining than the piloting outside of them. At least to me, you know, because they're a bit more difficult and they require a bit more strategy to get through versus the the other ones, which I find are very, very linear. And it's just dodge this, dodge that, shoot, 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 and you're good. Hold down the shoot button the entire time that you're in the ship. Do oh, not man. let go of the shoot button. I mean, I feel like that's that's every part of this the gummy missions it's just like don't let go of the trigger do not let go of the trigger i actually i actually played around with some of the uh the build mechanics in it finally because i realized i was like i cannot make it through some of these levels without adding more armor and a better gun i equipped a second gun and i that has a a three shot spread oh yeah yeah yeah. i don't like that one as much i use it because it's the only guns i have right now yeah of course it's you know at least gets the job done shoot some extra stuff that i wouldn't have otherwise no, yeah, for sure. And then, you know, we get out of that portal, and where do we wind up, Kyle? My favorite world, standing in bold contrast to the downturn that was Deep Jungle, we are introduced to the thriving metropolis of Agrabah. Agrabah, from the Disney animated movie Aladdin. It's a very fun, rich environment. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's not like a, an open world game, but the city of Agrabah, like, the colors are really fun and, it, uh, you know, some fun, like bouncing around the town and seeing a couple different environments. It's so dense and there's all the different um, there's all these different little ways you can pop into and back out of a building and end up somewhere different. And it all makes sense when you look at it from the outside or from the inside. You're like, oh, okay, cool. If I go in here and out there, I'll end up here and I can jump over there and I can get that chest and I can. I I love this world. I don't know why. It's a fun world. It really is. There's a lot of um, things that I really, really enjoy about this map. The. I find the Heartless are some of the most fun in this map. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Like the the big the the fat bandit. I think it's I think is what it's officially called. Fat bandit. The fat bandit. They're actually a little tough at times. Yeah, especially when they have their back to the wall, and it's just like, oh, I got to move you somehow because I can't hit you from the front. Basically, have a a cone based weapon like breath weapon which is a pain in the ass because donald cannot take it goofy can for the most part but we're getting a little for a little far in it but i mean you're introduced almost immediately to the protagonist of the series which is aladdin he is looking for jasmine who has been hiding from jafar and maleficent and Maleficent, because we're starting to find out that the villains of the Disney universe have come together in a pseudo cabal. Yeah, like the cabal Legion of Doom style thing. And they're kidnapping the princesses in the in this universe, uh, which we don't know why for we don't know for what purposes yet, but we know they're doing it. And Jasmine is apparently part of that. Yeah, she's the second one taken, too, because Alice got taken right in front of us, though we didn't know at the time who would take her or why. They still haven't really, like, told us exactly who did it. But it's now becoming a little more obvious. It's like, oh, okay, well, maybe if we consider Alice a princess, oh, here's another kidnapping in in progress. Yep. No, absolutely. Seems like Jafar is trying to steal her away, which I find is a very fun interaction uh between jafar and maleficent yeah maleficent warning jafar that to not get consumed by the heartless it's it, it's just building on what they've done with clayton in uh deep jungle yeah her basically being like hey you can use them but just know they might mess with you later and he's just like ah, i can control them and she's like okay like basically being like use them as a tool don't allow them to like overcome you Maleficent definitely seems to be the one with the most handle on the situation in terms of the heartless and what they're being used for currently to me. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, which I was like, OK, I, I kind of see you like I had a feeling you were the one running things behind the curtain. So, yeah, you go on and Jafar winds up snatching Jasmine and you try to track you try to chase him down, which is a yeah. really cool fight. It is a fun fight. That one, the the barrel centipede. Yeah, the thing that I appreciate the most out of this, like I, I took the time to take notes on this, was that um, the first like twenty minutes, let's say, you've been you've been spending time in Agrabah, like navigating the map by going in one building, out another doorway, to end up high up in the air so you can cross over through another doorway that that was inaccessible before. You're going through all this stuff to to navigate the map, and then in this boss fight, the whole of Agrabah opens up to you and becomes a battlefield. And I think that's so cool the way that they used the space like that. I 100% agree. I was like, oh, where's it going? And it goes into the next room. And I was like, wait, how did it? I was like, oh, they just completely pulled out all the stops for you. Yeah, they they like really pulled the rug out from under. It was so cool. It was so awesome. I that was a very fun fight. And it took me a while to beat him. Not gonna lie. It was a little more challenging than I expected it to be. I have got to take you through a power leveling course. Shut up. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> but yeah, so we, we finished beating that guy. Did you go back later and attempt to fight the the second boss in that room? No, I didn't. Okay, yeah. Oh, wow. That, there you go. Yeah, so if you go back mm-hmm. a little later, there is actually, it looks like, like 12, 13 of those pots on the ground. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember I was like, why are these pots here? One of them, when you try to break it, jumps up and it is a a pot on its back, but it's a heartless scorpion that Mm. is basically immune to damage. Mm. And the only way that you can affect it is to figure out how to flip it over. Mm -hmm. And I figured it out by mistake. I don't remember (laughs) exactly how I did it, but I wound up like knocking it on its belly and then Goofy whacked it. And I was like, (gasps) oh. That's how you do it. It we just threw a bunch of nonsense at it to flip it over. And after you do that, it's it's a fairly easy boss, but it completely soaks any other damage. Man. Uh, and so and it's fast. It's not it's not a slow moving creature. So keeping up with it is tricky. That so far is probably one of the hardest fights I've done. It took me damn, I 
think at least eight times before we finally beat it. Wow. Yeah. I'll have to go see that. I don't remember. I mean, it, it, it sounds familiar. Like I've read about it, but I don't think I've fought it. Because it's got claws and a tail and the tail weapon hits. <laughs> it hits hard. Jeez. Well, I actually went and trained a little bit and came back. Uh, Cause I was like, Oh, this must be, I didn't remember it, but I was like, Oh, this must be like a boss I'm missing. And it really was just like an additional boss. So it's kind of fun. Hmm. Uh, and then, but after that, I wound up, you know, you go on and you realize you go out, you have to go out to the desert and you stumble upon the Cave of Wonders. Yes, the Cave of Wonders, the fight that they couldn't show you, they had to tell you. Yep. You remember that? The little pop up that came on screen and explained, you must defeat the Cave of Wonders. <laughs> Yeah, that one was weird. I don't know why they did that. <laughs> they couldn't have one line from Aladdin saying, The cave, it's become evil or something. Like, mm -hmm. they, had the, they just had a little on screen pop up. That, I feel like that came, something came up in, in play testing. And they're like, Oh man, players don't know what to do here. Uh, we've already blown our budget. Just throw in a pop up. <laughs> just throw in, a text, throw in some text bubbles. Oh my God, we didn't talk about Genie. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Genie's just wild, man. Yeah, that he just he, he's there just kind of like the comedic humor. Um, like anybody who hasn't seen Aladdin, which God help you if you haven't like that, such an amazing movie. But they I mean, obviously, it's not Robin Williams. Sure. Which R.I.P. Like, yeah, probably one of the best Disney characters ever. Um, and a lot of it was just him ad libbing. But, you know, it was kind of it was kind of wholesome to see that character and feel the energy and. Got to just be like, man, I remember growing up and l absolutely loving this character. They didn't go as zany with him in, in the game as they did in you know, the movie or even even wackier was the television show. Oh, dude, the television, the television show was fun. It was, it was so wacky. Everything Genie did in that show made no sense. And they, it was they could just do it because it was a cartoon in the 90s. I like to imagine those animators on that movie either were completely overworked or they had an absolute blast making that movie. It can be both or both could be both. That one is that, that that's a special one for sure. Uh, but so when he pops up, it's pretty awesome. Oh, and obviously, you know, like Iago pops up briefly for Jafar and you ride carpet through the desert, but there's really nothing else that carpet does. Yeah, they don't do too much of telling the story of this. <laughs> it's a recurring theme in Kingdom Hearts that it doesn't do a very good job of telling the story of the film that you're visiting. No, it, it's basically like, here's the game and about as skin deep as you can. Here are some characters in the world. Yeah, I mean, this one does a decent job, better than most, but not still not great. <laughs> still yeah. not great. I feel like it's definitely got some of the most depth in terms of levels, especially because it's split between Agrabah and the Cave of Wonders. Mm. Um, I really like the the boss fight with the or with the, the head, the mouth of the cave is I find pretty fun. It's a little challenging because you have to attack its eyes and it's not normally at ground level for you to be able to just keep whacking it. You have to be able to like fight your way up it. Once you do get up there, it's pretty easy as long as you can stay on. But it's yeah. hard to get up to that point or just keep jumping and whacking and hoping for the best. Yeah, no, if you can ride the thing for about a good minute without falling off, it's cake to just keep whacking it in the eye. Um, and you can basically just let Donald you can basically just let Donald and Goofy screw off and they'll do they'll fight the little heartless for the meantime. Man, I missed a really good. That's what she said moment. Uh huh. Do it up there for you. Yes, yeah, so you go in and you're introduced to the inside of the cave of the cave of wonders. And it's a, it's a fun design. It's actually a, a lot bigger in there. And there's a lot. There's a bit more to do that. I was that I remember there being. It's a big mess, too. Like I was I was really struggling to like piece together what I was doing. And I was just kind of like blindly activating things and continuing forward to the best of my ability. Which, yeah. I mean, I guess it's a good thing that you can do that because children needed to play this game because we were children when this game came out. I know. That's so insane to think this game came out when we were, like, in middle school. If that, yeah. If that, maybe elementary. Okay, God. Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't completely finished this level only because I remember I took so much time on the playthrough that I did when I would fall or when I would go down into that bottom chamber. 
Mm -hmm. And I would just be like, okay, where am I at? And I would pop up somewhere in the map and I'm like, why am I here? Like it doesn't, I'm not the correlation from like where I fell to that didn't feel correct. No, I mean, I'll tell you now there's a, there's a, a page of, uh, of Winnie the Pooh's book in the cave as you're looking around. So don't, don't leave without that. Hmm. I, uh, I will definitely be on the lookout I mean, for that. We'll, I, I, we'll use a guide and find them all, of course, but. Yeah. No, of course. I know that's, I feel like that's just kind of, if you want a hundred percent, hundred percent games like this, especially ones that they, you know, it was hard for them to hide things. So they made them a bit more difficult visually like to be able to visually see. Or it was behind some kind of wall that you don't, you aren't able to access until you gain an ability you don't know about. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's just that's how these games used to be, man. There was a lot of like cheesing room because it was a very linear build and they were very limited on a lot of stuff they could do. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's not like the Breath of the Wild style where it's like, oh, there's a wall here. Guess I got to go keep going with the story and I can, maybe you do it later. It's like, no, nah, I'm going to do some crazy ninja like bomb flip platforming off a shield and just get over it. I just a few kids out there. They don't, they, they didn't make them like that back in the day. No, they still don't make kingdom hearts like that now. No, no, they do not. And yeah, I mean, I guess I got, I got to about the, the treasure room, uh, and did a couple things in there. And then I had to, unfortunately, uh, put a quick pause on it to continue, uh, some outside, outside of the game, extra like extracurriculars so uh i believe that's where we're gonna have to cut for today yeah i think i think we're gonna we'll have to wrap this one up here and we'll be playing again shortly to continue this story and see you know what happens after the cave of wonders we're assuming we're gonna have to fight jafar um and probably hopefully save jasmine you know, it'd be great if another woman isn't kidnapped in this series, but eh, who knows? Pretty sure. I mean, we all know where this is going. She's going to get all of them, whoever they are. Yeah, it's uh, I mean, Maleficent will. It would be very, very surprising at the end of this. She doesn't somehow have all of them and you have to stop her from using them in some kind of princess powered super weapon. <laughs> Just, uh, it's so I'm funny when I, like i know what happens but god it's funny to hear it put that way i mean that's that's all i can imagine it's just, just like sugar spice and princess power sounds like something out of sailor moon oh, a no, princess that's, powered that's, super weapon i was about to say like sailor moon mixed with powerpuff girls yes yes that, that's I kingdom know. hearts in a nutshell boom right there that is kingdom hearts um, well, thank you guys for listening, and we will catch you on the next one. See you next time. Hey there, Kingdom Hearts fans. Thanks for listening to the episode. Dream Drop Long Distance is hosted by Mitchell Orsino and Kyle Bradshaw, and is produced by Kyle Bradshaw. Our theme music was written and recorded by Alex McLean. <laughs>